Welcome to Magic the Gathering Grand Prix Seattle. That's our top eight. <laughs> All right, we're here on GG's Live. I'm Brian David Marshall. He's Marshall Sutcliffe. There's your top eight. Everybody, we had 1,150 players. All of them are gone except for two. This is insane. It's just done. Everyone else is side drafting, eating dinner, <laughs> texting bed beat stories to their friends. Ah, oh, man, I can't believe he had the Geist flame. Um, Robert Smith, there you get a look at him, Calgary player. He's going to be going to his first pro tour in Barcelona. He's playing blue-black, kind of a self mill. Ian Bartolome, he's got about yeah, roughly half a dozen pro tours under his belt. He's coming up. Uh, you know, he's dressed that pro tour, Dark Ascension. He's going to be going to pro tour, Iverson restored now. That's a pretty solid resume. Yeah, man. I mean, you I, know he can play if, he, if he's played in six pro tours. It looks like uh, Ian's going to take a mulligan here. I saw he had, I think, I think he had like a six-lander. No, yeah. Yeah, so you don't want to start off with something like that. What Dude, do we know about Robert Smith? We, you know, I don't know that much. I, I know he's been playing for a while. Uh-huh. Um, but he was in school. Okay. You know, and yep. he, you know, he looks a little tense. I, I'm not he, saying yeah, I blame yeah, him. No, 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 no. He was, he was definitely nervous. He, and okay. even after he won, mm-hmm. right, like that really crucial quarterfinal match. Yeah. And was through the semifinals and to qualify for the Pro Tour. And I'm talking to him and I'm asking him, so what's your story? Tell me about yourself. Yeah. And he's just like, um, you know, like really like, you know, just like, holy crap, I'm here and this is happening. And, it, you know. It, it probably happens pretty quick. You know, to put yourself yeah. in his shoes, he it has this big run up to the top eight. And then all of a sudden he finds out he's top eight. And I bet you he can't remember one single minute right. since they met. You know, the funny thing is you talk to someone who's been around the Pro Tour, has been to a GP. You know, you say, tell me your story. Well, maybe they've thought about their story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't think thought about, asked them I don't think he's thought about his story before. He's like, my story? What do you mean my story? Yeah. All right. Looks like uh, I think Ian said that he's keeping. Yeah. Yeah. Robert's going to lead on a swamp. I think it's a screeching ska, but no island. And yet another planes for Ian. I think he's just going to pass the turn here. Armored ska for... No. He's just another pass the turn. So lots of, lots of do-nothings here. Oh, forbidden alchemy. Ooh, we both love that card. And when your opponent goes land, 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 playing a forbidden outcome is pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? when they go threat, 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 and you it's, do it. Yeah, there's not that many sweepers in this format, so if you're digging for something with forbidden alchemy, it, it often will oh, dig you out. A couple people have asked on Twitter, mm-hmm. no, that is not Robert Smith of The Cure. <laughs> <laughs> How do we is, know that? Uh, yeah, I asked him. I asked him. I mean, he, you don't know. He, he, he does have an accent, but, you know. Yeah, I'll I was trust, like, I don't, know, I don't know that that's not you without the makeup, you know. <laughs> but he said, no, it's not him. I, it would be a really, like, super meta, like, pseudonym. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No, I'm not Robert Smith. I'm, I'm a different Robert Smith. Right. So, Moan of the Unhallowed, get two zombies. And we see that uh, Ian finally hit <clears throat> an island, but he doesn't use it. <laughs> well, he uses yeah. it, but not for blue. He's just the mid rangiest of flyers. Yeah, the 3 but I like first striker. I, I like him a lot. Let's see if there's a dead weight in its future. That's kind of its number one number one enemy. Yeah, it's uh, just a sensory deprivation. Calmly, so it makes it an 0-2 with first strike. Yeah. And it uh, looks like he can just beat in. An 0-2 with no strike. Yeah. Ian can use it to chump block at an opportune time. That's going to be a civilized scholar is my guess. Ah, uh, yes. Wow. Uh, that's a pretty nice turn. You know, he got in for four damage. He neutralized a threat slash blocker, and he played a card that can either be a, a threat itself or is going to generate a ton of advantage if it's not dealt with. And I don't know if you've ever played a looter against blue white. You feel pretty good about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's claustrophobia. Yeah. Yeah. Dot. That's yeah. it. Yeah. There's nothing else. Wait, 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 nothing. Nothing. And you know, you 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 know that card can also close a game out pretty quickly. You you were on the wrong end of that I uh, have on been. Friday. Yep. You know, uh, activate it, turn it into a to a five one, untap. Put the uh, spectral put flight spectral on top of it, bash you for seven over three phase. Yeah, no, it, it turns around games very quickly. And there's a grasp of phantoms. I like how Ian's Ian's pretty aggressive with his grasp of phantoms. He just wants to, to oh, get it once again. Look where he is, right? He's not that far off from being able to use it again. Yeah. And right, then he bonds a phase. So this goes back to the clock discussion that we talked about. Yeah. He's just saying, look, I'm going to... Did he 
we not untap? Yeah, we untap right there. there we go. Uh, yeah, he's just going to cut the clock in half with the box of things. I mean, you never feel great about putting on the token. You don't want to, you don't want to just... Yeah, they're going to take four every turn forever. I'm saying you don't want to chop there? Or... Oh, no, probably not yet. There's, there's a lot of reasons to not do it there. I mean, any pump spell would it, it can, sure. you know, the, the Sibilar Scar. He could just uh, not take five, you know, <laughs> a homicidal brute one time instead sure. of not taking two. Yep. Or he can send the departure and sure. <laughs> replay it. So that's the second time in our covers that we've seen Sun Departure use on your own guy. Yeah. You mentioned that you thought it might be an underused play at a good degree. Griffin is uh, does have a nice way to stabilize the board if it's not dealt. Yeah, and you know, there's not a lot of combat. Two eight 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 right. Right. Or it's, it's either you're removing the thing or it's it, or, right. know, there's, they don't get combat tricks. I mean, I guess tragics yeah. can be used as sure. a combat. Sure, you don't trick, get you don't get so moment you don't get moment of heroism. No. You don't get. Uh, nope. Yeah. You have to go outside of your color palette. Yeah. His power and toughness on his creatures is not going to change. You have to go off wedge. <laughs> off wedge, yeah. All right, so it looks like he he uh, discarded a double face card. Um, in order to uh, flip his leader. And this is probably a silent departure. Hmm? Claustrophobia. Yeah, that, that seems to be the read. When your <laughs> opponent you know, specifically takes it. Oh, no, he is just going to. Oh, he's just, oh, he's I, just got another. Oh, he's got another sensory gap. I got, I got as many of those as you got silent departures. Yeah. Because the thing is, is that the, the first silent departure makes some sense because he can cast it and replay okay, the yeah, Griffin. But the second one. one much worse. In fact, he'll probably just end up using it on the leader. Pick up a seven. Yeah, I do. I'm just going to take it. Go ahead. Still doesn't feel like he needs to block quite yet. Um, it's getting close. He's getting there. He's at seven. There's seven points of damage. <laughs> He's at seven. Yeah. He's getting into that area where if he doesn't use up that chunk dock. So Got to be a feeling of dread here. Uh, yeah, there you go. I was trying to think, like, what is two mana that he oh, has here? Yeah, feeling of dread. Yeah. I'm glad you figured it out. <laughs> it's taking me a minute. <laughs> Three mana is one thing, but two is a little different. So now the... Yeah. We're just going to... It's going to cast... Oh, he's going to flashback from Midnight Alchemy? No, Moan of the Alchemy. Oh, Moan of the Alchemy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense <laughs> than the main phase for Midnight Alchemy. Civilized Scholar turns back over. Because it failed to attack. So we're going to see the Griffin come back down, and he's left mana up to flashback this to get a if he deems it necessary. He is just clinging to this Griffin. Yeah. Robert can find a way to just get rid of the Griffin. What I mean, about? He still gets to get in for a fair amount of damage, even without getting rid of the Griffin. For six, like if he if he can uh, transform his civilized scholar here and get in for six damage. I mean, this is so. What's going to happen is is feeling of dread is going to come in. All right, he just ditched the land, so. I think he's just sort of said, okay, the feeling of dread is going to take away this particular attack phase, and he's got to use, is that a yeah, far bomb bomb Yeah. Okay, that seems relevant here. <laughs> wow. That's a big swing. And he's going to flash back two and take two here. So Ian goes to five, and uh, Robert has all types to be full. I mean, he's, Ian's going to need a miracle. He's going to need Gavin to design a card that gets him out of this situation. <laughs> Gavin's up for the task. He would, he would probably have it in his head already. And he's going to pack this one in. All right, so wow. Robert worked his way through that game. Um, that looked pretty it, good. It looked like Ian... I mean, Ian scuffled a little bit there. Yeah. He never, he, I mean, like he, the only creature... Really you know, he played played multiple creatures. They were all just the same card. Yeah, he just played it three times. <laughs> you know, and you get an idea of the quality of his draw when he's like, Silent Departure, my guy. Flashback Silent Departure on my guy. Yep. So, Like Griffin uh, was a decent board stabler until he just fell too far behind there. But I think, you know, it's important to note that Ian didn't find blue mana for quite a while, and then when he, even then, he, he drew quite a few uh, 
quite a few lanes. He didn't seem to have a whole lot of gas in the tank. You know, we didn't see a lot of action from him. And you know, one of the things that that I want to note here, you know, we were talking about um, the tempo plays. You know, the the plays that set your opponent so far behind. If you don't have a board presence, those things get a lot worse. I mean, you know, Silent Departure, they're grabbed, you know, in this case he, he did it to his own guy, but even had he done it on one of Robert's creatures, would have given him a little bit of time. Man, you want to be getting a block rather than anything. You know, and when you start using Feeling a Dredge just on defense, like you're not, there's no benefit on your offense, so you're just like fogging them, that's not the ideal use for them. You know, it's funny, you, you, all this tempo stuff, you know, it makes me... Card, we've talked a lot about Faith Shield. Yeah. It seems so good. It's been really good. You know, it's like, sound departure, your guy, nah. Nah. Nah, yeah. tight, you know. How about, you know, talk about your mana differential. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And, and the thing is... Yeah, you spend five to flash it back, I spend one. Because it's one. And you can mm. set up your curve so that you can play some guys or, and just have that or, one little or thing. think about that turn if you have Fateful Hour, you know, where you're like a down switch, except they're like, uh, feeling a dread. It's like, okay, you know... Fate shield my uh, land. <laughs> yep. Fate shield my land and kill you, right? Because now, yeah, none of that stuff's working. So, yeah, that's a, that's a card that I've been keeping a, a closer eye on after this weekend. Uh, it's done some pretty serious work. And I think it's probably a little underrated, too, because you know, the default mode for it is save my creature, protect my creature. But it really does say permanent. I and mean, there's a lot of permanent, you know, if, you're, if your win condition is, is some enchantment or, you know, maybe your opponent wants to uh, urgent exorcism the claustrophobia that's been keeping their key threat down. And you can you control that. Yeah. You can protect that too. Yeah. Also it knocks off those cards. Right. Right? That's yeah. a big one. And you turn on you know un dis dis disenchant your claustrophobia. Yeah, that's I mean that's the that's what happens. And you know, when we've been talking about the tempo in this format and how aggressive it is, and when you can do something on your opponent's end step that swings what their plan was into the situation where it's completely awry. That, that's very strong. By, by the way, we just need people on Twitter to suggest some potential cure songs. If Robert Smith wins, <laughs> you know, for the coverage team to use as headlines, you know, Boys Don't Cry is obviously going to be one. But, you know, we want you to we want you to think outside the box here. Right. Right? We don't want, we don't want Boys Twitter Don't Cry. Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Before you ask, I don't think Ian Bartolome is of Arab descent. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I don't think so. so that, that song's off limits here. Huge. And if he wins, now again, we're, 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 we're getting way ahead of the game here. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen, you see players come back from a game down all the time. Oh, yeah, and Ian, uh, we've yeah. seen some, Ian's some on the metal play. out of him today. Yeah. He's not going to give up early easily at all. Yeah, he is on the play. He gets to be it? on the play if he can set up some flyers and then yeah. just work his silent departure game. I think he's going to be able to, uh, yeah. to take this thing down. This yeah, I think if both players script their draws, Ian wins. I think Ian wins. I think so, too. Yeah. And I think it's for the reason that you said he just ends up being so far ahead on that. Looks like he's really trying to decide here. These, these uh, borderline mulligan decisions on huge games like this, I mean, this is an elimination game of the finals of GP Seattle. You know, that he, he gets greedy and decides to keep, you know, he, he gets a little loose and says, maybe I'll get there. Right, he, right. You know, it's one of these ones that are just so, so close. And you but just, at the same time, it's, a, it's a bouncing act, right? Like, yeah. you, don't, you also don't want to be like, oh, I can't keep this too land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know, sometimes you have to keep a hand, you know, which is like needs a little, needs a little bit from the top of your deck to get there. You know, yeah, it's and, true. And you know, you don't want to, you also don't want to just mulligan hands that are perfectly serviceable otherwise. Yeah, I mean, because the thing is, is that when you walk away from the table, you know, if, if you got to play your games, if you gave it everything you had and it didn't work out, you can live with that. But if you don't, you know, if you decide to make a, a bad mulligan decision and just <laughs> never get to play a game, that's a tough pill to swallow. Looks like Robert decided he was going to mulligan his yeah. hand. Which, that has to make Ian feel at least a little bit better, just because if he's got a, a questionable keep or one that's, that needs a little help, he might have a little more time if, if Robert's going to have six. Co coverage writer and Josh Bennett is a great lover of puns. And, uh... He shakes his head. <laughs> People are suggesting cure songs for the coverage headline. He nodded so, that time. <laughs> why are you glaring at me like that? Why are those laser beams coming out of your eyes? Why am I burning? <laughs> Now he's just gone to full ignore mode. He's <laughs> <laughs> not 
Let's just finish the conversation. <laughs> We're mulliganing. I mean, I got to do something here. Take a look at his six here. This is where you really hope that your six is a good one. Yeah, okay. going to five. It's doable. I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable going to six on the draw, right? You yeah, know, it's not that bad. So he still thinks. Is it? Is it? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, he keeps pump faking us here, and looks no, like he said kept it. Yep, yep. yep. Okay. It looked like he didn't have an island, but I think he, I think he found one on his first draw step. Okay. Look like it was an island for There's a Mind Shrieker. Mind Shrieker is going to be an interesting one. Um, probably Ian's just going to want to develop his board here, but we'll see. No, no dead weight? No. Would yeah. you even dead weight there? I mean, the, the chances that, that yeah, Ian just true. bashing you every single turn and, and actually activating it are not that high, which is what he just does. Ooh, and he hit a four drop, too, so <laughs> he just take five, Robert. Yep. All right, so maybe we just have a plan A. He might have just not had a three drop, so and we see a think twice on end step from Robert. That, that's also one of those uh, you know, crutches for the for the keep. Yeah. <laughs> this is something like a foster yeah, we're gonna see a foster. Go ahead. And look what just happened. Oh, faith shield! Wow. Big it's game, like right? you knew that was coming. I didn't know that was coming. That's awesome. <laughs> that is funny. Now, he, he, he got an extra tempo boost out of it because he still gets to attack with his Mind Shrieker, and he just hits a land this time. Uh, but is he just going to activate it again? This guy's... Yep. Oh, he's not. He's got a, he's got a two that he wants to play. He's like, got a Screeching Scale. Yep. Right, so we're going to mill two. Yep. And there's a Grasp of Phantoms. Hey, this is what we love. Building up the advantage. Setting up for the later game. Wow. Faith's Shield. Ian is being very aggressive in this game. Yeah. Well, he's he just, must I mean, have just drawn the screen. But he's just, yeah, but he's just, he would have played that instead of... Just doing exactly what you talked about doing with the other. He's using his mana every turn. Yeah. It? You know. Uh, you know, he missed on the second activation. Yep. But on the first activation, I mean, he's doing two in activation right now. Yep. Right, we're going to sensory dep deprivation to Scott because that's a guaranteed to where the mind shrinkers are. There's a civilized scholar. Three DMC players, that's time around. I'm going to do something off of two DMC players. And it looks like the Griffin's coming down. Yeah. All right. Now things are starting to roll pretty well for Ian here. So this is kind of what you and I are talking about, where now that Ian has uh, formidable threats on the board, his tempo plays, oh my goodness. You know, let's say that Robert plays his murder. Like you, were saying. Yeah. you know, if Ian has a feeling of dread or a departure, or if he flashes back that at some point, it just sets Robert back so far. He, Scar's he just, chant of the skill song. That seems interesting. Oh, no, it's because he's got a murder. And there's the murder of cards. Okay, now let's see if one of these tempo plays is going to happen here. It depends on if what oh, Ian has in his hand, of course. I like when you're... Oh. It looks like he's going to get smoked here. Ah, yep. That's a tempo play. It's Kill a tempo, it. he's, he gave him mana and he comes in for four. This is, this is going how Ian wants it to go. He's gonna, he can start milling himself. Uh, maybe hit a few minute dread. Cheap flashbacks go. And also at the point where he could just kill him on a couple of yes. fortuitous activations of the it Mind does. Shrieker. Yeah. Oh, get you for five, get you for nine, yep. you know? Flip, flip two fours. Yep. I was playing in a, in a sealed PTQ and uh, had that situation come up where, where my opponent put himself he really crafted the game well, and he needed to do nine on the last turn with his mind shrieker, and I had lethal. We got there. It's not your favorite game plan, but it's a plan. Another chant here. I feel so sour when it doesn't work. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, we do see a chant. Go ahead. I want to see a board state where mind shrieker has chant on it, and he still just. <laughs> I just need to get in for one. Mind Shrieker's going to come in. Alright. And he's going to go ahead and dun, 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 dun. That's a one. Okay. So it's a two. It's a two. 
It's a card that Ian probably would like to have. Right? Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is he activating oh, again? Okay. He is. And that's a two drop oh, and wow. the Fumina Dread that we mentioned, and he's just going all in here. So okay, okay, I did four. four. Yep. Yep. yep, you're a five. Yep. Now I have Feeling of Dread. And now he's got Feeling of Dread. So yeah, how feeling does he get his way out of this situation? Oh, he, he needs oh, yeah, to. Yeah. He needs to find a removal spell. You know, that will kill. Yeah, there's a Forbidden Alchemy, so he's going to find something, hopefully. Okay. There's a lot. I mean, yeah. the Mind Shrinker's pretty fragile. Looks like a fistful of answers, it actually. Does. That's a claustrophobia in front of me. I think I might have seen that. I think, I, think, I think you're right. Yeah. He's like, hey, look. So when Ian sees that he's pitching a claustrophobia, which I, I, I don't know if he did or if he actually did. Hey, he pitched the uh, victim of night and can't make it out up there. <laughs> but when he discards a removal spell, you can't be. Robert's got a, two lands in his hand that he can use to gain advantage off of this one. Claustrophobia? Yep. This is going to claustrophobia. Go ahead. One trigger. Oh, he played his land. Does he have a... Uh, I don't think he has the... Uh, um, the Grasp of Fan. That's the only thing you'd want eight mana for. Otherwise, you need to... Oh, he's got, he's got... He's got... He's got a forbidden alchemy that he might flash back. He, uh, oh, I th oh, he just played that? Yeah, but he just still, played it. You only need seven for that, and you need to be, have, have cards to discard yeah, to Now he's got seven. He had to play that land. Oh, that was the seventh? And it's, his guy just got Dungeon Geist. Okay, cool. So he's drawn a card with Think Twice. Okay, I misread. I thought that, uh, I thought he just flashed back the alchemy, so I thought he was already the Wow, Dungeon Geist comes down. That keeps keeps is, the civilized scholar. Yeah, that, that that's a huge swing. I think Robert might need a card from another set here. Now. Black or something. Yeah, <laughs> zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I don't think that does it. Um, none of those are any good. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Two turn clock as the board sits. He's like, okay. I'm gonna. Look for the top four cards in my library at the end of your turn. Okay, go to two. This is a critical one for Ian. If he can commit something to the board, or he didn't. So we're in a similar situation to the. There's also a Cackling Counterpart in this yard. Okay. Fortunately, copying the Scholar doesn't get it done for him. Is that a victim? No, I think it's a mono. The majority of cards that, you know, in your deck usually don't have flying, and so they're all kind of instantly irrelevant. He's thinking about it, though. I mean, he gets a draw step here, too. He can't, it can't be a creature, because there's a feeling of dread to finish him off. That's right. It's got to be, got to be a removal spell. Hard removal is needed. Ian has a ton of mana and two cards in hand, but at this point, Robert's beyond being able to play around anything. He just needs to make the play that he thinks is going to keep him going. And he gets his draw step here, too. Is it a think twice? It's be somewhat better than that, I think. It's a think twice, so apparently he hasn't found the answer that he needed. I figure. And Ian wants to check out the as much for game three as for the card game. <laughs> yeah, well, She's got me thinking this is heading towards. Three PMC. Parents are now Please find your seats. Three PMC. Parents are now Please find your seats. And he just passes the turn back. Now, if he had a card like the Clue, he, he would be in favor of that. Got a Sea Kite? It is. The value Sea Kite comes down. Is Robert at two? Yeah, he is. Yeah, okay, so they'll both... Yeah, he is! And Ian takes game two to force 
the game three for the for all the marbles here. That's a so so there you see not we got all the, the inkwell looter. Right. He's in the he, did he did he sneer at us there? I think he did. did he give us a sneer? Did he know? Did he know? He knows. He's he knows. He's like, like oh, oh, I don't want, want to see me. Yeah, I really like Inkwell Looter. Yeah. He does some great uh, kind of magic satire art. Yeah, know. he does. He also does. Um, he also does like some interesting comic books. He does. Yeah, yeah. that are about um, uh, marine biology. Marine biology. Yeah, he, he's really a few awesome. Of those yeah, same. same. They're yeah, awesome. And they're really cool. Yeah, they're really cool. And he also does a uh, an online web comic called N Garbage Time All Stars about basketball. about basketball. Yeah, which is a lot of fun. Although, yeah. m unfortunately, it's way too much about West Coast basketball. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You know. I mean, like, if he wants to do comics about David Lee all the time, I'll read him. But, you know, I need to see, I need a little East Coast bias. <laughs> well, Inko Luter is one, uh, one of the most West Coast guys I've ever met, I think. He's yeah, he's very West Coast. Back. He's super West Coast. Yep. All right, both players are going into their sideboards. Yeah, Ian got a pretty good, like, a, a pretty good look at a decent portion of Robert's deck there. He's, you know, he's got at least... An idea of what he might want to be responding to. Here. Welcome to round five. You have 50 minutes to make a deal. Looks like Ian's still thinking. It looks like he's got something maybe that he has in mind and he's just not quite yeah, sure. He if he doesn't wants care to for that you know. screeching scab. Yeah, I mean, the mole's nice, the body. Has it been that impressive? Yeah, it looks like that's what he's taking out. I did see that too. Is he putting in an extra land? I could not see. I actually, I like uh, Screeching's, Screeching's Cop a lot though. Feels kind of aggressive for a blue card. We see that Robert's actually still looking through his side. about putting bullets in you know, cards that uh, maybe are only good against one of your opponent's cards or something. Well, I, I, you know what? Like the times that they're going to come up and do nothing, mm -hmm. you know, or I, I just I know when you draw it and they don't draw their yeah. yeah you thing. want your cards to just do something all the time, I and mean, that's why I mean, it's my fifth show, I love it. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh look, I get to get through, I get to do this, I get to do that. It's never, it's rarely ever a dead card. Yeah. It's often a one for one. Yeah. Ken, Ken, for your, one. your friend Kenji's uh, a little curious about the decision to take uh, claustrophobia over victim night there on that. Yeah, was it a victim? I didn't have. I think the, it was. Uh, I think it was a victim night too. Uh -huh. So one of the reasons why you might do that is an angel of flight alabaster. The mind shrinker is a spirit, and if your opponent, if, if you decide just to kill it, and your opponent. Uh, you know, plays an angel, then you, you felt a little silly for not just uh, neutralizing it. Between sure. The board. Sure. Um, I, I'm not really sure. Like, is there a way to untap it? Yeah. We've seen Silent Departure can free it from its bomb. Sure. You know, sure. so there, there's a, that's a legitimate reason that we've seen. Right. You know, so that that's probably something. Triggers that spirit bird. Spirit bird. <laughs> spirit bird. <laughs> it's funny, and, and we've also got the Nefalia Sea Kite, which is just a bird. Just a bird. Yeah, he's not trying too hard. Well, maybe the Mind Shrieker is like the almost like the geist of a yep. sea kite. Sea kite. Sea kite. Yeah, it might be. Player draw. I'll play. Players are taking their time here. I'm gonna this rush is, these things. This is a big. This is a big this shuffle is a up. Big decision. Big yeah. shuffle up. You would prefer to have a random, a fully randomized deck in this situation. Good luck. Do you wish your opponent good luck? Uh, I never do. Can I say have fun? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, but I haven't played, you know, I haven't played at this level in some time. You sure, know? sure. I don't know what, I, what I'm going to say there. Looks like uh, Ian just snapped all of that. Of it, and, uh, Robert likes his, his hand. 
I just get in business mode when I'm like that. It's like that's what these guys are doing sure. too. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I mean, look at look at, look at Hollywood and world in San Francisco. Just stare at him. But just like just put I mean, just, just to stare at right? like it's just the all business, yeah, all the time. I love that version of Carmen. Yeah, man. Well, he's you know he tells a lot fewer bad jokes, <laughs> so there's that. You don't have to endure. Yeah. <laughs> Leaves more room for me to tell bad jokes. <laughs> You know, I saw Conley eating magic cards today. I thought that was a myth. It's not. No? No. He eats magic cards. He's done a fair bit of mulligan in here. He's definitely poised to have an awesome hand, I think. <laughs> I think if you asked him, he'd probably tell you that, too. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Because that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> See lands. I think that might be a dungeon guy there at the end too. Go ahead. Okay. Let's see a, an iron wing as well, so hopefully we're not gonna have any big mana problems for maybe some of the griffins. And we have to think twice on the instep for mm -hmm. Dig dig. Draw one card. Scholar. Scholar. Oh yeah. yeah. Seems good. I, again, against blue white, you're very happy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Ian <laughs> could not get the claustrophobia down on that scholar pass because he knows what an advantage he's going to get. He's either going to start taking five, yeah. or he's just going to start going through his deck and getting every good card that he needs. Looters. I have a very soft spot. Yeah. I love this one too. So if he does have the dungeon dice, he doesn't have another like creature to play. Do you just? I think you have to wait. You just you just need to get the two for one out of it. Yeah. So we had a flashback with the big twice and the cross up here. Is he mono islands here? I think Robert might not have a swamp on the table. This is gonna be murder of crows. It is a murder of crows. So yeah. Yeah. bone to ash? Maybe just a sea kite on that step. Yeah. Here's a kite. Bone ash would have been a block there, but I love that card. Probably just play it. Oh, he is just going to go yeah. ahead and lock it up and start yeah. attacking. It makes sense. Yeah, man, what a great, what a great swing, right? Yeah, like, what a huge you, you just <laughs> You're just like, well, all right, well, I'll use my mana here. I'll untap. I'll do this. I'll get yeah. in. I mean, how much is a claustrophobia worth? About blue, blue one, right? Yeah. Would you would you like a 3-3 three, three flyer for one color this <laughs> mana? Thank you. I would take that. And we do have a swamp. Uh, it's not a swamp, is it? Still all hearts. And a guy's catcher's rig is going to oh. take him. Wow. These are haymakers. Yeah. <laughs> These are just huge. He's like, I will loot. Even though you can stop me from looting, you can't stop me. Man. These two for ones. Ian's got to regroup here. We know he still has one of the. And he discards the Mona the Unhallowed. Okay, I guess he figures he's going to be way off a of double black, so he's, that's probably a card that he's not going to be able to resolve for a long time. Robert's and it's still, and he still has half a card out of it, right? Yeah. It's in his yard. It'll be there later. Yeah, yep. if he can hit some swamps. The thing is, I'm, I'm pretty impressed because Robert's been able to hang in here pretty well with only islands. I mean, you got to figure that half his deck is turned off here. And we're going to just smite the monsters. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yep. Blow for blow here. We're just trade, trade, trade. And at the end of it, we've got a 4 or 5 on the ground and a 2 3 in the air. Card now? He can, he, you know, he can close this race pretty quickly, right, with the 4-5. He can. Also, uh, Geist Catcher's Rig makes Silent Departure look a little worse. Yeah. <laughs> got a C kind already. Remember, there's also a Tackle and Counterpart in mm -hmm. Robert's deck. So instant tackling, speed. Instant Geist speed. Geist Catcher's Rig. Rigs are pretty sweet. I did not think of another think twice. So he's got at least two. Yeah, he, he gets. He really. He really digs into his deck. He does, and he had the looter too that he yeah. could have been using. It, it got neutralized here. Looks like he's just digging, digging, trying to hit a swamp. I'm assuming. And it looks like we're going to see a swamp. And we're just Sensory going depth. to neutralize the threat. And we've got hey, a saving, saving grasp. grasp. Oh, yeah. no. Now i got to hear yeah. about that. I guess he is blue-white, so. Yeah. I'll, I'll let it happen. So do you think that uh, that Ian was pretty bummed about not being able to saving grasp his, uh, his dungeon, uh, dungeon 
just gonna try this. Yeah. He's careful to leave the white man. Right, him. yeah, because he yeah. can do it again. He's also uh, could have the faith shield, too. Sure. A lot less tempo loss if you do space field. Same grass means you got to cast it then again. Pretty annoying. Fog man, huh? Bone flinger. And that is a far bog bone flinger. He's going to read it. He's going to respond. So if he, if he did have Isn't the shield, good? which he didn't. Sure. So he is I believe far, bone good. flinger's a main ability, right? That's the one that I'm curious about because with Farbog Bone Blum, Flinger on the stack, if he could uh, sit and grasp his guy. Target creature. Is it really? Yeah. Did he do it with it on the stack? I don't know, but it is target creature. It's not a. It's not a may. Oh, he just. He just. Okay, so he ended up just having to put it on the guy's catcher's rig. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. How many cards you have? Why wouldn't you just hit your civilized scholar? There? Maybe he has a way to return it to his hand and tap it. Does he have any scobs? I mean, yeah, there's reasons to do both. He's just going to bond some faith here. So he, doesn't, he, just, he just really just goes through his deck. He sure does. You know, he doesn't have many cards left. He's got to be careful. A lot of times, if you when you flash back the first alchemy, it puts you into an area where your deck starts to get low, and if you happen to have another one, <laughs> you put yourself in the danger zone pretty quickly if you don't have a lot of pressure, which he has very little right now, just Ooh, a little yeah. okay. He didn't have quite enough mana to uh, recast his Riffin after playing the Bonds of Faith here. Skip saying, see a double face. Come on. So attack, it's good too. And another sea kite looks like it's going right, to gobble up. Uh, yeah, wait. Bone flinger? Or are we going to see the instant? He's just going to tragic slip. So that right. makes it into a one two. One two, yeah. yeah. So it actually was a combat trick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we got there. Is that another civilized scholar? Is it? He's like, ah, oh, can I please Man, see your other really civilized can go right through his deck. Uh oh. Where? Oh, there oh, it is. <laughs> That'd be awkward. Uh, uh, I don't actually have one. Yeah. Okay. There's a silent yeah. departure off the top for Ian. How many cards in One. So Ian's going to browse at the graveyard here and see what he's looking at. I wonder how aware Ian is of Robert's deck right now, you know, how many cards left in his deck. Sure. It's not really a factor yet, but if, if Ian can really get stable with this, uh, oh, he's going to have silent part here. And that's just going to play this script. Again, using up all of his mana. I'm going to watch his cackling counterpart pretty badly here. If, if he cackles the bone, the, the flinger here. Well, actually, I mean, he wants to cackle the, the, the... Oh, yeah, the just the rig. Right? Yeah, just the rig is much bigger and just kill it. Yeah, you're totally right. It's nice that he has two different targets with which to do this. Yeah. You should definitely get this in. He's just going to... Man, he has just neutralized every single thing. Yeah. He's like blue-black enchantments. He is. Thankfully, it's not. Blue, black, no aura control. Let's go. Okay, go ahead. All right, so let's go. This is a good approach. Like, this might be the thing. Like, maybe these enchantments have gone up a lot. You know, with these super aggressive decks, you neutralize all their threats and then actually let you do stuff like play Forbidden Alchemy. Flash back a thing twice without taking an eight. Double Griffin. The whole Home's Griffin the family. Minus 10, 2. <laughs> no, those are 3, 2. Both are first rate. First rate on a negative 10 is your creature gets 10 plus. The other <laughs> creature gets plus 10 power. You gain 10 life. Yeah. I'm kind of nervous for these guys. This is that in between stage in yeah. the game where you just don't know quite which direction it's it going to take. It feels like the in between stage has got to favor Robert with just so much 
it's the ability to just keep like grabbing the top of his deck and pulling up cards and he just feels like he's he gets a flashback a, a Mona the Unhollow this turn if he wants to mm -hmm. he can still flashback a Forbidden Alchemy yeah and Mona the Unhollowed here is quite good and he's gonna there's the cackling and there it is yep. oh by the way he gets to do that to your next flyer as well because he can flash you that can back flash that back now he's got, got a lot of mana I believe so. Okay. Uh, maybe not. No, no, I don't think so. Did he flash it back already? Yeah, okay. I can't see it. I can't see it. He's just got the one card on top, but he just he went ahead and just let the creature win. He drops the 10. Jeez. Yeah, his graveyard is. <laughs> no, need it, got it, got it, need it, need yep. it, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Chapel guys there, I think. Not irrelevant. It blocks two twos. Sort of. I mean, it, it just, I'm just going to flash back my... Oh, it's flyer. Yeah, I'm just going to So fly. it's actually kind of a negative that it's a flyer. <laughs> First time that's ever happened. Sounds a part of your token. What token is that? That was the, that was the copy oh, of, the the copy. Of, the, of, of, the, of the thing. Okay. Yep, the guy's catcher's rig. They call it the Ghostbuster. Sure. Yeah, it seems perfect. Claustrophobia for Robert? Or? I see you're great. Let's take what do you guys? Far fewer cards. Yeah. Well, I mean, he just, he just doesn't have that ability to, you know, no velocity, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Robert has seen a large portion of this deck here. Mash for two, you're at eight. He keeps two in him. Do you think we're going to just see the. I think he's going to mono the unhallowed here. here, yeah. That's yeah, going to add a significant board pressure. Yeah, and then the end of the next turn, he can just EOT, tackling counterpart, get your blocker out of the way. I still, I'm still not sure. Yeah, we'll have to see. Let's see what he ends up He's going to turn to flash back, but. Is there a feeling you're great for Ian? Does he get to buy some turns? I just don't know how he gets back in the game. He needs to draw creature after creature. There's, you the, know? there's the chapel geist. Oh. He doesn't have another play. Chapel geist helps a little bit. <clears throat> Still going to take six here. If uh, is he, is it, Are we at the point where if Robert's able to turn his civilized scholar into an homicidal brute that he is in a position to just win the game. But he wasn't able to do that this turn. It's pretty close. He's going to... I mean, we, we've got a chump blocker here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Yep, I will take... I'll kill your chapel guest. Uh -huh. it's gonna be attack for six. He's going to attack for six. And You're going to chump. So He's going to go for two. Block, or is it next turn? Go ahead. He says it's next turn. What's my card? Extend the hand or Miracle Draw? He's thinking. He's going to tap some mana here. And we're going to play... Hmm. Land Shrieker. He's got enough. He's going to play his last land. He was holding it, but now he's got three activations on the Mind Shrieker. And a Chump Block. It's two. Yeah. Now, I, I, as long as there's nothing in there's his a graveyard, token, he's got the win on the board. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He might just be making Robert yeah. do it. I'm not... Yep. Oh, he's looking for the. He's looking oh, for he's, something. He's looking for the uh, feeling of dread. And he's gonna and that's a hand. Again. Congratulations, Robert wow. Smith. Robert Smith came through this whole field. Blue, black, mill yourself. Look at him. He, he let him have a. He had he's a little like, excitement there. He's like, yeah, I want a GP. Yeah, I want a GP. He looks like he's uh, <laughs> trying to kind of. Process that. A bit. Yeah. Look at like, that those guys were so calm. Those guys were so calm. The guys on the rail were like, they didn't even like, who won? Yeah. Oh, our guy. 